Hello, welcome to Maths with J. We want to integrate this algebraic fraction, so you might think initially at first sight that you're going to differentiate the denominator and get a multiple of the numerator, but unfortunately that won't work. But what we can do is factorise the denominator, and then that means that we can use partial fractions. So let's just look at the fraction and factorise the denominator. So just writing out the fraction and replacing the denominator by its factors. So we've got 3x and x to give us the 3x squared, and we must have 1 and 3 to give us the 3. One of them must be a negative, and it works out that we've got 3x minus 1 and x plus 3. Notice I'm leaving out the integral symbol at the moment. We just want to look at how we can replace this fraction by two separate fractions. So what we're looking at doing is finding two fractions that add up to this one fraction. So we've got an identically equal symbol there. And we're going to have something over 3x minus 1, so some number, and then some other number over x plus 3. So if you're familiar with the cover-up rule, you might like to use that. So we'll use that here. And if you're not familiar with that, then if you wait till the end of the video, we'll have a look at writing out the method in full. So using the cover-up rule, we're going to start by covering up the 3x minus 1, and we're going to replace x by a third. So that means we're going to have on the first fraction, let's just write the the line in for the fraction. So we're going to have 4x plus 7 on top, so that's 4 times a third plus 7. And then for the denominator, we've got x plus 3, so that's a third plus 3. So that gives us the number that goes on top of the 3x minus 1. And then covering up the x plus 3, that's going to give us 4x plus 7 over 3x minus 1, and putting in minus 3, the value that makes x plus 3 0, will give us 4 times minus 3 plus 7, and then in the denominator we'll have 3 times minus 3 minus 1. So 3 times minus 3 minus 1, and we can simplify both of those. So first of all, I think in the first one, I'd multiply numerator and denominator by the fraction on top by 3, so that we don't have all these uh, fractions within fractions within fractions. So we've got 4 plus 3 times 7 is 21, and then 1 plus 3 times 3 is 9. So we've multiplied top and bottom of that fraction by 3, and then we'll still have the 3x minus 1. And the other fraction, simpler to work out, because we haven't got any fractions within it. We've got minus 12 plus 7, so that will be minus 5. And then minus 9 minus 1, so that's minus 10. And that's over x plus 3. So then, the first one, we will get 25 over 10. So that will simplify to 5 over 2. And then we can just write that as 5 over 2 times 3x minus 1, and then the minus 5 over minus 10 simplifies to a half, so the 1 goes on top, the 2 drops down, multiplies the x plus 3, and there we have two fractions equivalent to our original fraction. So this really is the hardest part of this question. Once we've replaced the original fraction by two other fractions, the integration now becomes really simple. So let's just, um, actually, I guess what we ought to do is check our answer, shouldn't we? So a really easy way to check that this is a reasonable answer is to substitute in any value. But best value to substitute in is 0. It's nice and easy to check. So let's just write this down. So if we're checking x equals 0, first of all, the original fraction, so the left-hand side, if we put x is 0 throughout there, we get 7 in the numerator, and then we get minus 1 times 3, so minus 3. And then the new new replacement fraction, so that single fraction, let's, let's put in x is 0 there, so we get 5 over 2 times negative 1, so minus 2. And then the other one will be plus 1 over 6. 
and luckily that does work out to be minus 7 over 3. So not a proof that the answer is correct, but um, it's a good sign. So that's our little check. Right, so let's get rid of that. And then what we want to do next is just use our final answer there to replace that in the integral. So let's tidy this up a bit. Right, so now what we can do is rewrite the integral. And because both of our fractions have got a half in them, it will make it easier to do the integral if we just take that half outside. So inside, we've got 5 over 3x minus 1 and 1 over x plus 3. So you don't have to do that, but it just makes it a bit simpler. And then you can write down the half. And now we're ready to integrate. So the first fraction has got a 5 multiplying 1 over 3x minus 1. So first of all, we get a 5 there. But when we're integrating 1 over 3x minus 1, we're going to need to divide by 3, because when we differentiate 3x minus 1, we get 3. So we divide by the 3 there, and then we know that when we integrate 1 over something, we get the natural log of it. So that's going to be log of the modulus of 3x minus 1. We can only find the log of a positive number. And then next one, a bit simpler to deal with, it's just going to be the log of the modulus of x plus 3. And then we want a constant of integration. It can be inside the bracket or outside, it doesn't matter. So that's one way of writing the answer. You might want to write your answer as a single log, in which case you would want to write the constant of integration as a log of another constant, and then you could gather up all the terms and write them as the log of one big complicated looking expression. Okay, so that's the answer. So if you're not happy at writing down the original fraction as two partial fractions by using the cover-up rule, you might like to watch this bit where we're going to look at how to write it out in full. So as before, we start off with writing down 4x plus 7 over, and we factorise that, so that was 3x minus 1 times x plus 3. And then at the next stage, we actually write in a to represent the first unknown number and b to represent the second one. And then we add together the fractions on the right hand side. So we're going to get multiplying the first fraction numerator and denominator by x plus 3, we would get this. So we're multiplying top and bottom by x plus 3. And similarly, the second fraction, we multiply top and bottom by the 3x minus 1. So that you can see once we've done this, both fractions have the same denominator. So we now have a times x plus 3 plus b times 3x minus 1 all over 3x minus 1 times x plus 3. And now if we compare the two sides, you can see the denominators are the same, so the numerators must be equal as well. So that means we've got that 4x plus 7 is the same as a times x plus 3 plus b times 3x minus 1. So now you can substitute in any value for x, and it's going to be a good idea to make either x plus 3 0 or 3x minus 1 0. So first of all, we make x equal to minus 3. And if we do that, then the left hand side is going to be minus 12 plus 7. And the right hand side will be a times 0, because x plus 3 is minus 3 plus 3, so that's 0. And then we're going to get b multiplying 3 times minus 3 minus 1, so b is multiplying minus 10. So b is going to be minus 5 divided by minus 10, so b is equal to a half. And then we want to substitute in a value so that we can find a. So this time we're zeroizing the coefficient of b. So 3x minus 1 is going to be 0. So we're going to make x equal to a third. So then the left hand side will be 4 thirds plus 7. And that will be equal to a times a third plus 3. And then we can multiply through by 3. 
So that would give us that 4 plus 21 equals a times 1 plus 9. So that we've got 25 is a times 10. So a is 5 over 2. So we get exactly the same as the values that we had earlier, but just a bit more writing down. So the cover-up rule does that for you without having to write all that down.